Dan Larson here at the photo booth with a bunch of stuff sent in from Toy Galaxy viewers like you. Uh, up first, real quick, I managed to, to, to luck out and find the latest wave of uh, Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning Collection figures at uh, Target nearby the other day. Uh, here's here's my here's my quick review of this line. I love it. Uh, I, love, I love Sentai. I love the Power Rangers. I'm really excited that uh, the Hasbro picked up this license is making these figures. Uh, I was only able to get a few scattered uh, figure arts pieces from the Super Sentai line. Uh, and I'm approaching this line just like I'm approaching everything else right now. There's no line that I'm a completist in. So I'm just grabbing the pieces that uh, I'm attracted to that I think are cool. Uh, I go busters. I managed to be able to watch uh, the whole season of when that premiered like six, seven years ago or whatever it was. And then of course, Mighty Morphin is Mighty Morphin. And then Lord Dracon is such a weird thing. Like as much as I prefer Sentai to Power Rangers, it's so weird to me that there are now characters that exist purely in the Power Rangers continuity like this guy uh, who doesn't exist. And I know there were other characters that existed uh, in, in the U.S. continuity, but not in the Japanese continuity. I don't want to get into that right now. <laughs> Uh, but this is a, uh, an original creation, and I dig it. I dig the alternate reality sort of aspect of it. Look, in, look into it. It's from the comics and the Shattered Grid video games and stuff. I just dig the design. It's it's clearly like a hybrid of the you know White Ranger, Green Ranger stuff from original Mo Mighty Morphin, uh, and that's all neat and cool and stuff. And let's get on to the uh, mail. Jim from Tewksbury, Mass, sent in a whole box of Lego minifigures. Well, Lego minifigures and Creo figures. Uh... So we've got Creo, hang on, we got Creo, Creo, and I'm not gonna know all the names of these guys. This is Nemesis, Nemesis Prime, and this is El oh, Beachcomber. I don't, it's I, I don't necessarily recognize all of them in their Creo forms, uh, especially if they're not fully assembled here. This is uh, Long Haul. Anyway, we've got Creo, and we've got. Uh, I think these are all Disney Lego minifigures. I know there was one wave recently. That was uh, all these Disney characters. We got Hercules, we got Scrooge McDuck. Uh, this, I think, is from the second Lego movie. I'm assuming which I did not see. We've got Elsa, and Jafar, and Scarecrow, and Hellboy. Well, that's, I don't know how Hellboy got in here. Uh, this is, uh, oh, I can't see his name. This is... Uh, it is... Oh, it's a shark Sharkticon. Okay. Yeah, I never would have guessed that. I probably would have said, like, Alphatron or something. Oh, nice! Prototype Boba Fett. How did you get in here? Uh, that is very, very cool. I think this might have been, like, an exclusive uh, for a book or something, but I don't know for sure. That's a really cool piece. I, ha I have uh, a couple of Boba Fetts and a Jango Fett. Didn't have that one. That's really neat. We've got Minnie Mouse in black and white. Jasmine. And, uh, this is... Fuel Line? I don't even know who Fuel Line is. I've never even heard of that guy. That's made up. Cheetor and What's-Her-Face from uh, Incredibles, Anna. Anyway, lots of cool stuff here. Uh, I have to say Mrs. Toy Galaxy was very excited about this box uh, when I uh, opened it up and showed her what was in here. Uh, we do have quite a few Lego minifigures. Uh, I can honestly say I don't think we had any of these, so nicely done, Jim. Up next is Keith from Galloway, Ohio. He is uh, Baby Groot underscore W-I-D-S-F-A. I think there's periods in between all of those letters. Uh, what does the W-I-D-S-F-A stand for? Uh, according to uh, Keith, it stands for, well, it doesn't stand for anything. So check him out on Instagram. Uh, he sent in a whole bunch of stuff here, so I got to go through this really quickly. Uh, first off, we've got... First off, we've got... <laughs> bag of gundams and this is a really nice assortment too uh we've got the uh gpo1 here i just picked up the uh robot spirits version of this uh one of my favorites for sure that's just the basic gpo1 there's uh, a couple of different versions i can't get into that right now we've got the gundam epion from gundam wing this is the evil the bad guy uh is there a wing in here okay so yeah we've got both of his wings we snap on here, and snap on here. I assume the other shoulder pad might be in here. We've got, uh, also from Gundam Wing, this is from Endless Waltz. Uh, we've got Heavy Arms Custom, uh, just like Heavy Arms, but with more heavy arms, more guns. We've got missiles or rockets in here. 
in the chest. So his shoulders open up, his chest opens up. He's got rockets on his thigh or on his uh, calves here. And then these guys can attach either on the back for carry around like so, uh, or he can just hold them with his hands. As I recall, and I, and I do already have this one, as I recall, it is nearly impossible to get these things on his hands uh, and to get them to stay. You can get them to stay on there. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, but he's got two of those. And then also in here, nice little assortment. Uh, okay, good. The other Epion pad was in here. This is uh, Space Leo. Leo is uh, just sort of the designation for this particular unit uh, in Gundam Wing. All of these, uh, uh, most of them were, were named after different constellations. Uh, Taurus, Leo, uh, what, Capricorn, I don't remember what the other suits were. Um, there was a sort of atmospheric version of the Leo that was in green and had more of like an airplane kind of back. And then this was the Space Leo uh, that had the sort of uh, rockets on the back to whatever, you know what space is. Uh, but this is a cool design. I always dug this. Any of those sort of like grunt, you know, just the army builders. This is like the Zaku of this era of Gundam, and I've always dug this one quite a bit. Uh, he's missing his giant cannon and his guns and all those other things. Um, but still, that's really cool. We got a couple of Gundams here. We've also got a Kenner, vintage Kenner Ambush Predator. Uh, this guy's seen better days. A lot of these things have. This guy, when he was new, this thing would have been crystal clear, uh, translucent plastic. Uh, now he's sort of a, a mixed a mixed beverage here of all kinds of stuff. Uh, he's got a little bit of that uh, kind of deteriorating plastic, that sort of sticky feel that uh, sometimes you can clean off, sometimes you can't. Uh, and then he has this armor piece on front. That's, that's closer to the color that he would have been originally. Uh, and then this is just severely discolored over the years. Uh, and then he's got some chrome armor here as well, which is, uh, it's a really cool combination. I dig the chrome armor. Obviously, I dig the translucent figure. Uh, but uh, this one has certainly seen better days. Uh, that said, it's very rare to find them in non-deteriorated plastic condition anyway. And then in here, a whole mess of... Just a whole mess of builder figure pieces. I can already tell that some of these are obviously going to be duplicates for me. Uh, but some of these, I gotta check. I know I have a hand. Ooh, look, nice giant man leg. Uh, I've only got like, there's like 13 pieces to this build a figure. I think I have three of them, and one of them I think is the other hand. I have like a, a hand, a bicep, and a calf or something. Um, not sure if that's, ooh, I hope that's the juggernaut leg I need. Definitely don't have any Solomon Grundy parts. Uh, I think I need these Absorbing Man arms. That's cool. I know I'm waiting on an arm for Sandman, so hopefully that's the one I need. That's a duplicate. That's a duplicate. All right, well, we got some, definitely some pieces there that I need, so that's exciting. Other pieces that are duplicates. This is a Link figure. Not sure which one this is. I've never really been into Nintendo collecting, uh, and I certainly have never really been into... Uh, Legend of Zelda at any stage. Uh, it was just never really my game. I never really got into it. And, and, and I'm sure it's because I just didn't own it. You know, you, you create those connections with the things that you actually owned. Uh, so not having the game, never really looking for any of the figures. B, D, and A. In China. No idea what year that's from. Uh, he's just got shoulders and a neck. So that's cool. We've got, oh nice, we've got uh, Boba Fett. Oh, nice. Like, I hadn't looked ahead uh, to see if this was in here. Uh, I just didn't know I was pulling it out next. So, here we go. This is uh, Kenner Boba Fett for the Boba Set, number 492. A uh, really nice one, too. Super blue. Nice color. Looking good. Very cool. Nice tight joints. And we've got a blaster in here as well. That's very awesome. And a couple more pieces. We've got the Savage Predator. There we go. Uh, you know, in the last couple of <laughs> videos, there's been, uh, I think there's been a few Predator figures in uh, uh, a couple of recent videos. So I have to check back and uh, get them all together and see if I've got a whole collection at this point. I gotta be pretty close. Uh, I think there's just a few that I'm actually missing. I do not know how to attach this. Uh, this, this era of figures, does that just go there? Uh, this era of figures my younger brother would have been into, so I would have sort of watched it through him, and I don't think he really had that many of these, uh, because 
as ridiculous as it sounds, uh, he was young enough to be into these, but I was still the toy collector. So I was uh, the one that was actually would have been into these. And I really wasn't at the time. Um, I've picked up a few here and there. I do really dig the uh, NECA, uh, the modern updates to the old Kenner figures. Uh, some of those have been really, really exciting uh, updates. We got Star Fox, which is, uh, this is, uh, I, Star Fox, I didn't have a uh, Super Nintendo, so I didn't really get into the original release of this game. But I do like these figures, and I do love the concept of a little team of uh, space adventurers made up of, you know, little uh, cartoon animals. And uh, I saw these figures when they were released, and I was like, ah, you know what, I might get that team. And then I managed to fight the urge, and now that uh, Star Fox is actually in my collection, I may actually have to go and get the rest of the team. I think this is the little uh, accessory that came with Star Fox. Oh, nice! It's a uh, tiny little replica of the ship. That's awesome. Very cool. And then in here we've got the Robotech VF-1J Veritech Fighter. Uh, 30th anniversary of Robotech, which would have been like, uh, yeah, there it is, 2014. I wasn't sure if it was 84 or 85. Uh, some, some of these are good. Uh, the, there's a, there's a mechanism in here. I don't understand why they don't just, the me mechanism doesn't just carry over from version to version here. Each time some, one of these things gets made, they always make a new mechanism for how it transforms to keep those legs in place. I feel like they got it right on the first try with the perfectly transforming original, uh, piece, uh, back in the, uh, early eighties. Uh, but this one has like this, and I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you real quickly here. Wow, that's a lot of gear. <laughs> this has... So, there's a couple of versions of this that I've seen. And it has this leg transformation here. Yeah, I don't even want to... But there's this arm in here. There's this arm attached to his leg. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that allows the legs to flip around. You can see it in there. And, and they just break so easily, uh, especially on the knockoff ones, which, you know, coincidentally is the one that I've actually seen more of. Um, so I may not even transform that thing. I may just leave that in uh, robot mode. Uh, I may just leave it in the box because it actually looks pretty good in the box. Uh, and then here we have the Revoltech. This is from, uh, this is from the early 2000s, mid 2000s, somewhere around there. Uh, I know, I'm sorry, let me apologize in advance, I still haven't seen Evangelion. I still don't even know if it's pronounced Evangelion or Evangelion. I want to say Evangelion, but uh, I always get side-eye from people when I say it that way. Um, mainly because the people I'm saying it to don't even know what it is, and they're like, that's weird. But uh, I don't know what the purpose of the yellow one is. It's cool, it's got a lot of gear. <laughs> uh, this giant shield, sniper rifle. And this era of Revoltech figures, Revoltech, Revoltech, uh, are all very, uh, they're, they're not as poseable as the stuff that's being not made now, but still pretty poseable and still pretty cool. So that's all really good stuff. So uh, all of this is really great, and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much to Keith for sending that stuff in. Up next is Chad from Paris, Kentucky. Uh, this is a really special thing that Chad sent in. So there's two pieces here. Uh -uh. We have the Bandai Boba Fett model kit, first off, and he's got his two guns here. I'm not going to bother putting that gun in his hand. Uh, he has his other blaster here. So we have this model kit, and, whoops, Chad uh, has taken, has made the effort to paint this particular figure. I'm going to adjust this a bit. Back up. There we go. Uh, Chad has made the effort to paint this with uh, matching battle damage to the vintage Kenner Fett. Uh, this is number 493 uh, to the vintage Kenner Fett that he sent in. And uh, that is absolutely charming to me. Uh, I love the effort. I love that uh, he made, uh, you know, was was careful about matching up uh, exactly where all the paint had worn off on this one to the uh, piece that he had uh, constructed and sent in here. Um, it just, you know, it's just a little bit of extra uh, thought and creativity and effort. And 
Uh, you know, I do have this model kit already, but mine is unpainted, so uh, I'll have no problem displaying this one right next to mine. Obviously, this one's going to get displayed next to all of the other FETs, uh, but I'll have no problem. Uh, I will gladly display this one next to mine, uh, given the different uh, coloring and uh, just 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 the effort that Chad has made to uh, turn this into a unique and uh, individual thing that is a one of one, and that's in my particular Star Wars collection. Very cool. Thank you very much for that, Chad, and thank you for four ninety three. And this next piece is from, uh, the next box is from, I think it says JJ on the box. There wasn't a note inside, uh, from Bellingham, Washington. Uh, there was a business card inside, uh, Ben, Ben, uh, Ben Hansen, uh, comic illustrator, digital painter. Uh, and that goes with these two prints here, which are really nice. We have Boba Fett. We have Boba Fett. And then we have uh, Sabine Wren from Rebels. So two cool uh, Mandalorian pieces there. And then in the box itself, and I say I'm not sure who it's from because I, I could not read the name on the label. So uh, just a heads up, uh, if I'm gonna properly credit you, just make it nice and clear. Throw a note in there. Because uh, sometimes, you know, uh, I. I have frequently had conversations with people online and they say, hey, I'm going to send you a box of stuff. And I say, oh, hey, that'd be really cool if you send in a box of stuff. And then I, I can't find that message later on. And I, I, I feel bad. I don't remember the exact conversation. I don't remember exactly where we had that conversation. And then I can't find it when it comes time to do the video and I feel like a jerk. Um, so that happens. I don't know what this is. This is some kind of uh, Optimus Prime monstrosity. <laughs> one of these, uh, I would call it a 5 POA, but it's actually got one, two... Uh, three, four, five, six. What a weird assortment of ex uh, articulation. And what a weird color uh, on that thing. Oh, this is Boba Fett. Uh, very nice. He is uh, out of focus. There we go. Uh, so this is going to be Boba Fett number 494. A uh, little bit loose, but plenty of beautiful battle damage there. A little discolored. Uh, still looking great, though. That's great. And then we've got some generic guys. We got a Destiny figure. I don't remember what this guy's name is. Zavala, something like that. Uh, somebody sent this, uh, sent one of these in in a booth video not too long ago. Um, nice piece. I'm going to be very careful with his legs now that uh, my recent uh, hunter figure just absolutely fell apart. His leg just snapped off. And then we've got a whole bunch of random stuff. Look at this, though. Holy cow, look at that. A Captain Podley from Space Precinct carded. You know, I have one or two uh, figures carded already. I don't think I have Podley. I think I have uh, either Fredo or Took here, and then I think I have Brogan. Um, I've seen others. I've definitely seen Snake, uh, Loose, but this is actually really nicely carded. The one I have carded is pretty beat up. Uh, I think we used mine, photos of mine, in uh, the Space Precinct video that we did not too long ago. I say that, it might have been like two years ago at this point, I can't remember. Uh, and then we've got a whole assortment of things here. Um, I'm not even sure who this guy is. Walking Dead, maybe? I don't know. I tuned out uh, quite a while ago. Uh, and then just a whole bunch of little army guys. I can't remember what this line is called. I think this was the Toys R Us line. It might be uh, the Walmart one. Um, just little military guys. We got Ben Mendelsohn from uh, Captain Marvel. Which is cool because I never picked up this figure, uh, so that's uh, that's a good piece for my Marvel Legends MCU collection. Uh, I dug that movie. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, it's funny. I went and saw it like the night before uh, Endgame came out. I was like, ah man, I need to get caught up. I need to know how things are going, how this all works out, and uh, went and saw it like at like a midnight show and then went and saw Endgame the next day. Um, she's also from uh, Destiny, I believe. Uh, another one. In fact, I think both of these were sent in the same booth video uh, previously. So that's weird that they come as a set. We got a couple of uh, army drones here. Looks like they have a missile or a launcher or something up there. Yeah, kill some combatants. And over here, oh, just a whole bunch of these guys. I can't remember what this line is called and it's killing me. Action. It's not Action Force. It's... Um, I don't remember, but also here, look at this. We got a second Boba Fett. So that's exciting. That's numbers uh, 494 and 495. Incredible. So close to 500. Uh, that video is going to have to go into production soon here. Technically, we've been working on it for a long time. Technically, we've been working on that video since Boba Fett number one. 
Uh, that's not true because Toy Galaxy didn't exist back then. But, you know, hey, it's it's a long time coming. We're almost there. It's pretty exciting. And this gets me uh, two 500th uh, or one 250th uh, closer to, to, to wrapping that up and getting that video. I don't know what I'm talking about here. Uh, so, JJ, Ben, Hansen, whoever sent these in, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> And then last up in the booth here, we have Mason from Garibaldi, Oregon, Oregon, uh, in the bag here. Uh, get Mason included a note that uh, thanked, thanked Toy Galaxy for being entertaining and fun and all that stuff, uh, but also for letting Mason uh, be comfortable with the idea that you, you didn't have to collect action figures uh, for any other reason, for any reason other than you just thought they looked cool. And that was enough for Mason. Uh, and that is something that we've tried to... Uh, that's just sort of the attitude I've always had. You know, I don't... Uh, I'm not collecting stuff because other people are collecting it. I used to. I'm not collecting stuff because I have to. Uh, I mean, other than just being... Having that compulsion and obsession and uh, borderline addiction to collecting stuff. But, you know, other than that... Um, but uh, just because stuff is cool. For instance, this figure, this is uh, Phantom Zone Superman from uh, Batman vs. Superman, just one of those weird variants that got fired out for no reason other than, you know, maybe it, it, it was in like a piece of uh, concept art for the development of the movie, uh, or if they were just like, look, we got the mold, crank some stuff out, come up with some different ideas, give it different names, and, and run with it. But we've got uh, Henry Cavill here, uh, translucent armor, sweet throwback Kenner vinyl cape so nice and then he's got this uh, helmet here to enter the phantom zone and I really dig this figure uh, I think uh, somebody else at one point had sent in a Riddler that has the same sort of structure he's like all green translucent has his cap uh, you've got you know swivel elbows here with the, the the joint at the elbow and then knees and hips and that's about it uh, except for his neck you know no no torso shoulders are up and down but no side to side but you know, it's fun, it's nice, and these things were super inexpensive. Obviously a kid-geared line, uh, but in terms of uh, the translucent, and there's like a little bit of a glittery sparkle to it, really nice figure that I never saw on the shelves, but absolutely would have loved to pick up. Oh, also he came with this super axe, so that's nice. And then we're going to cap it off with Boba Fett number 496. Another super nice piece, a uh, little bit of weird color here, uh, kind of inconsistent fading on that one. But, uh, you know, tight enough, lots of battle damage, so much closer <laughs> to uh, 500. This is, uh, this is probably going to happen by the end of the year, so I don't know if we'll get the video out by the end of the year, but we'll probably hit 500 and then, uh, get that video rolling. So thank you again to Jim, Keith, Chad, JJ, or Ben, and Mason. Thank you for watching this and all of our videos. Hit like, hit subscribe. Check out our Patreon if you're in the position to help the channel grow. Thank you very much. Later. <laughs>